I Give got me just one eyebrows. second. Start going. <laughs> Mark's got balding eyebrows. They do. Have, they they look like gray eyebrows now that you pointed out from here. They're not gray. I mean, I think it'd be the lighting, but uh, yeah. yes, but, yes, yeah. that's that's what everybody says. It's, no, 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 not gray hair. It's, it's peppered. It's pepper. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, it's okay. You, you can, I can relate to you because not only do I have gray in my beard as we've established before, but I'm getting letters from AARP. Whenever I answer the phone, I'm like, hello. What pissed you off? It's a great argument to have. I love my mom, but I think she's half crazy for doing that. How dare you? Do you oh. work with your girlfriend, Mark? Or your wife? Mark? I keep them separated. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I call people, they don't answer the phone, I'm like, f*** them. Wrong number, Click. Well, he's not that smart. And sometimes he sounds like he knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. Go. But therefore, you're an ass, and I don't want to talk to you anymore. Yeah, but what do we know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, the AARP. Just, Mike's like the model for spokesman it. for... <laughs> Did you sign up for it, or do you just you just ignored it? No, I just I got didn't... laughed at by my wife. <laughs> And then she realized that she's the one who married an old man. <laughs> I know, she is five years younger than me. I don't know. What I think you should get the, uh, I think she should apply and then just go to like movie theaters and try to get away with it as often as possible. I mean, is there a legal minimum age requirement or? I think it's like 55 or something. Well, I, I guess I don't know about legal, but... <laughs> I mean, you can retire before you're 55. That's the true. American Association for Retired People, right? That's true, yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, I knew people in college who <laughs> officially were retired. Like, like, they actually had a retirement and stuff that came from their job because they'd right. be in businesses that closed down. So, they'd give right. them these retirement yeah, severance, you know, packages. Yep. Sure. So... It can happen. I don't have one of those, though. That's. I mean, then you're just a liar and a cheat. <laughs> Which is why I didn't sign up for it. If you're not getting money from one other source, you can't save money in another source, okay? True. True enough. So, Mark. Yeah? You were talking about a flag. Okay, so I think this was in California. I, I just skimmed over the article and then... <clears throat> talk to other people who like to debate on the merits of this, but I'll give you the rundown of how I know it. Uh, at this university, that's uh, it's a public university, okay, a state school. Um, uh, there was a flag in an area of this university that was hung somewhere, and I, I believe one of the students saw the flag. It's an American flag, and took it down. Then later on, they had a council meeting. Uh, this is, I, I don't know, like the university student council or whatever group of people that help determine what the students, uh, like what's best for the students or something like that, decided that in this small section of this school, uh, this uh, university, that there were to be a ban on all flags. And because uh, basically they're saying like, you know, we have people from other c countries, people who are in America that go to this university that might find the American flag specifically, but other flags also uh, offensive. So the best way to do is just to ban all flags in this area. And now basically people are saying, well, this, like, we shouldn't have a state university where it's legal to ban the American flag in America. So, what do you think about that? So, I mean, do they want to... So, is English also offensive to some other people? I'm sure it is offensive to somebody out there. So, should they no, no longer have signs that have words on them either? Because any language could be offensive. I mean, everybody can find something offensive about right. anything if they want to. And I think that's true. But also... Should students be allowed to make rules? I mean, they voted on it. It got overturned already. Like, it was like two days before it got overturned. But they voted on it and said, wait, we don't want this here. It doesn't matter who finds it offensive. If they, like, you know, 
if a group of students say, hey, we want to make this rule, shouldn't that be allowed? So isn't this exactly what's wrong with the world anyway? Like people getting offended by such dumb stuff. I mean, really, like, well, I don't care what kind of flag you want to hang in your building. You know, if I need to f go to your establishment, it's not going to bother me one way or another. Really, I don't think. I, mean, I can't imagine a scenario where that would bother me. I mean, I, so I'm trying to think about it. Could well, there be an offensive <clears throat> flag that somebody hung and I would be okay with? Sure, like a lot of people think the Confederate flag is very right. offensive, and a lot of people wield the Confederate flag. But I can get behind why you're against the Confederate flag, because you know it stands for, in some people's opinions, like slavery and all that stuff. Right. It, it's America. It's our country's flag. Right. It's like saying you can't fly a state flag like in Michigan or in D.C. We have state flags. In Maryland, where I'm an EMT, the seal is partially, the EMT seal in the fire department seal is partially of the Maryland flag. Right. If somebody were to say that they're offended by that and therefore you can't have the Maryland flag because maybe I'm from D.C., maybe I'm from Virginia, maybe I'm from some other state, that's just, that's asinine. Well, so, okay, let, let me ask this because uh, first, Mike, you said it doesn't. It shouldn't matter one way or the other, but it seems like you do care about. Like, I'm losing you, Mark. Yeah, I was going to say Mark is really lagging too. Robot man. <laughs> oh no! At least that's a kind of nice smile we got. <laughs> you can see those nice gray eyebrows. <laughs> Oh, poor Skype. Uh, <laughs> let me ask my wife if she has, if she's, she's downloading anything. I, I'll be right back. One moment. <laughs> okay, gonna... so here's the thing, Mike. You seem like, well, flags shouldn't offend anybody, so it's a stupid thing to get angry about. But, I mean, shouldn't that also be true in reverse? Like, you know, somebody doesn't want flags, it's a stupid thing that anybody should care about, so why to get angry about that as well? I get angry because, well, I, I don't even think I'm angry, but this I, I feel like this is kind of the way our nation is progressing and I don't like it. I don't want people to be that sensitive about everything. In fact, I was going to bring up, you know, we, we talked about this whole scenario and, and what I'm about to say is a little different, but it happened very close to home. Like, so Lansing, the, you know, state capital of Michigan, just it's recently, not Detroit. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Thank goodness so, for that. So, I, I don't know. I guess I can't remember how much we've really talked about this on this show, but for those of you listening and watching or whatever, I consider myself a Christian. And at the state capitol building, not too long ago, someone set up a monument to satanic worship. Okay. Now, did I get mad and move out of state? No, you know, <laughs> did it? Did you go me? burn it down? Yeah, I was Maybe. gonna say no. I, I, I certainly didn't didn't do that. Do I think it is probably not an awesome thing for our, to be in the front lawn of our state capitol building? Probably not. But by the same token, you know, it's like Jeff said, it's freedom of speech. It needs to exist for our nation to be what it is. Well, okay. So, then do you think it's sort of okay? So this is one argument. Like some somebody could find it offensive. So we shouldn't let anything allowed, or somebody might find it offensive, but we should allow everything. So even things that we don't like. So let's say in this building, that at this university, they wanted to hang the Confederate flag and then the Nazi flag. Would you be okay with that? Because that's freedom of speech. Well, look at what look what Christmas has turned into. I'm not, at I'm many... not saying the American flag is equated to that. Yeah, but, Just, uh, well, look at Christmas at many, many stores and stuff around the nation. They no longer have Christmas trees. They no longer have Santa Clauses because they decided that it was too... And then everything's happy holidays at this point because they didn't want to be leaving people feeling that they were not... Their religious beliefs were being like overlooked and things like that. Now, done for good reason, maybe... Stretched too far. It's done to sell possibly. product. It's done for. <laughs> it's what? See, done to sell product is what it's right. done for. I mean, so true, don't but no, I'm not talking everywhere, like just, just stores. <laughs> but I mean, you're talking, you know, government buildings, you know, all this stuff. Um, 
because people were offended that it was Christmas and that's, you know, n not acknowledging people who aren't Christians and things like that. So people did get offended about that. And it's kind of opposite what Mike's saying. There's a satanic worship spot and the state uh, capital of Michigan, apparently, that's allowed <laughs> to be there. Was it set I up? Don't, well, I don't know if it's still there, but this happened, if I had to guess, like two or three months ago, something like that. Was it set up by like the government? The Church of Satan or Satan worshipers or something. Yeah, it was some like organization that is very satanic but in it, nature. Was it, was it allowed to be there? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's why I say I don't know if it's still there. It could possibly still be there for all I know. So, so anyways... Would you then be for like any flag being able, it being able to be hung up in that common area, or do you think it, we should just make the exception for the American flag because it's America? I, I, the, I feel like I feel like you have to. The only reason huh, it's a slippery slope for sure because once you start hanging stuff like that, I don't have a problem with it. Me personally, you're not going to offend me by hanging a Nazi flag somewhere. Do I think you're an idiot if you choose, if you are personally want to hang a Nazi flag in the middle of a school, you know, situation? Yeah, I probably do. However, you're not going to offend me. Like, it is well, what it is. It however, I might not be attacking you directly, but. Right, like, I was going to say, however, that's where you get into the slippery slope part about it is there are going to be people who that definitely strikes a nerve with. And then, you know. You can only go so far before it becomes like you're instigating people, right. um, and you know, and then you have a whole nother situation if if you really start to make people mad. So I don't know. Well, which one would you prefer, Jeff? Like which style? Like let everything be allowed or nothing be allowed? No, I don't think either <coughs> should oh, neither. be the way you have to go with things. You you oh. have to look at something in a college area. What are the things that should Blanket be allowed, an American flag, an, an American college, an American flag, a college flag, and a state flag for whatever state that college is in. Those should blanket be allowed without question. Then, you, like Mike said, you can run into a slippery slope of what else you, you know, ban or whatnot. But it'd be, it'd be like joining, like to use the Nazi flag, for example, like you talked about. If I joined a Nazi organization for some odd reason, right. and then went to the Nazi meeting and was like, I'm offended that you have the Nazi flag up here, take it down. No, that, that's got to be like, you have to expect that that is going to be something to be allowed there. If you come to America to go to an American college, you have to expect there's a, you know, the ability to have an American flag flown, uh, the college flag flown, or the college colors, right. or whatever you want to call it. Like, but, okay, okay, but th see, this here's why I think there's an issue. Like, I think maybe, because uh, the, the argument isn't, necessarily a ban on the campus completely of American flags. It's banning an area of the campus. Okay, so, so let's, let's ban the football stadium from being able to have the national anthem because people who aren't American are watching the football game. Okay, but the thing is... <laughs> okay. No, because here's, here's the a, thing. It's a good it, counterpoint. It, it, was, it wasn't like... Um, it was one person's decision. It was voted upon by whatever leaders, I don't know exactly what student council leader power, powers are, decide that this small area, there should be a ban. And I don't think that's necessarily a horrible thing. Like, I don't think necessarily that the American flag should be necessary in every single square inch of America so if someone no, well, has to have an area free of something, like <clears throat> let's say let's have a quiet area, no noise in this area. Well, we are banning all noise in campus. It's, that's not the exact same thing. It's saying that this is one area that we're not going to have so, of something. What area was it? It was like the student council meeting or lobby or something like that. And they're basically saying, well, because we've got students, I, I'm not going to put words in their mouths, but I believe that they were saying that because we have students from other countries or nationalities, they would come to this campus area where they represent some of the students Which and they would feel, terrible. well, here's the thing. Uh, let's say, like, let's say, um, you know, you got a Bosnia flag, okay, and somebody, like, from, actually, I can't remember, Bosnia had a war with Serbia or something like that. You know, if you had two people 
two students from those two different countries, one could be offended by one of the flags. And sure, the American flag was used in this example, but it could have been just because this area was free of flags and then someone hung an American flag. And that's so, why it served as the purpose. So, in the, and that's where my problem comes in with this whole situation is shouldn't we be teaching that person who might be offended not to be offended by something so silly? Isn't that where we're falling short? Is just teach people not to be so offended by everything. Well, I mean, then you could say like, well, we could teach people not to be offended by racist jokes, or we could be, uh, teach That'd women be awesome, not yeah. to be. <laughs> I, I I don't think that would be necessarily awesome. If no one got offended by anything, that'd be awesome. It'd be pretty cool. <laughs> you wouldn't have petty arguing well, I, all the time. I think it would be more awesome if there was no reason for anybody to be offended. Well, and that's so, true, too. I mean, instead of saying you shouldn't get offended by racist jokes, if there were no racist jokes, that would be much better. So, and I think yes. Now, here's the, here's the real point to, to the crux of the exact situation we're talking about. Is there a reason somebody should get offended by an American flag hanging in an American university? On American I, soil. I, on American soil. I could, I could argue yes. Is that because you're uh, from Japan? <laughs> well, actually... <laughs> Japan is a great example. Well, the Japanese flag that we know today is different from when the uh, before World War II. The Imperial Japanese I believe flag. Our American flag is different than the one before World War II right, as true. well. Okay, but anyway. Actually, so no, not probably not World War II. Whenever Hawaii uh, became a state, Hawaii so Hawaii. I guess Hawaii was a state before that. So. Okay, so let me let me start with Japan. Basically, oh. after World War II, America made Japan change their flag. And basically, if you know the Japanese flag with the uh, the red stripes that are coming out of the circle, that's the old imperial flag. And basically, basically, uh, they were saying is sort of like the Confederate flag that was used during wartime and imperialism in Japan. So that represents basically what like the Nazi symbol would be in Germany, right? Um, I mean the swastika or, or whatever. Uh, in America. I mean, if you just go to a Indian uh, Native American reserve and you show them the American flag and say, "Could you find this offensive?" There would probably be some that would say, "Yes, I find it very offensive." Like it's a, it was a foreign, basically, it's people from another country came in and stole our land. Could you? I mean, are you going to disagree with that? Well, it's not. It's currently America, though. <clears throat> Right. Well, currently it's America. That makes it. That that. I mean, if you go to. That makes it okay now to fly the American flag. America is the land that it currently is, and it's covered. It's like back in the day, if you if you were to now go fly whatever I don't even know if it existed, whatever the USSR flag was in the old right. USSR area. Oh. Now so, that would be different than if you did it when the USSR existed. Well, let me let me lay it out like this, like. Okay, so the three of us, we consider ourselves reasonable, rational people, right? Sometimes. <laughs> Most of the time. I am always, so, but I'm... <laughs> so if any one of us went to Canada, we'll say Canada, for any reason at all, can you, any, any of us, can, can you imagine a scenario walking into a building where there was a Canadian flag and getting mad and demanding it being taken down? No, definitely not. Not for me personally. No. I don't even think I could no. in America. <laughs> I don't even think I could in America, especially a Canadian flag. If like I went into a business that was owned by like a Canadian who like emigrated like to America, I'd be like, hey, right on, man. Right. Like, yeah, right. Like, you're, yeah, you're exactly right. Like, yeah, if I, there was a Canadian flag in an American establishment, yeah, I, I can't imagine a scenario where I'd get mad about that. Mm -hmm. So, as three self proclaimed rational thinking people, you know, I think we just decided what what well, should take place here, right? But, okay, <laughs> but let's talk about the uh, ubiquitousness uh, of American flag and why making it not legal to, let's say, say that this area of our property shouldn't be allowed so, to have a ban on the flag. So he, here's here's something about this, though. Do I think that it's okay to have a room? Where you say, okay, there's enough flags around, this is going to be flag-free zone just because, like, we want to have a flag-free room. Sure, 
but it got brought up because somebody was offended that they saw the American flag somewhere. Are you telling me that there's no room on that campus that exists that did not have a flag in it? No, but if it's an agreed upon area where you said this is not going to be an area with well, flags. Why did that then person get offended in the first place? At the one room that they walked into and they're like, American flag, fuck this. Well, it's sort of like, okay, like in America, we have handicapped parking spaces and these places is reserved for handicapped people. So they're going to complain and be like, I'm not handicapped, I'm offended so, you offer that. So you're people. like, okay, well, basically people who aren't uh, with a disability shouldn't be able to park here. And then you see someone who doesn't have a disability parked there. Are you going to be offended? Like, we all socially yes, agree that this is going to be the rule, and then people, someone though. broke it. Well, I, so it's, it's not illegal and not to have it's, an it's area also that's common not... common courtesy to let those less able be able right. to... <laughs> and that's what I'm saying with the whole flag thing, is it was agreed upon by... The students you're that right. people who would get offended by that do have a less abled mind. I, I would agree. So, I mean, can we consider them handicapped too and let them park in the handicapped spots? They seem to earn it. I, I, I see. I, I think uh, um, what we tend to do is like everything should be not offen offense offensive to people. And I think, well, no, there's there should be plenty of reason why we should get offended. Like, why can't we have an area? inside a state university where people vote on not having something in that room. It seems like that sh should be allowed. But how far, and, how far can you take like, that? I was going to say, isn't that a tremendous waste of time? Yes. It's like a frivolous lawsuit just without the like, well, lawsuit. So, okay, but so think, think about it like this. You're in a college. You're trying to learn something. Now all of a sudden, how long do you think this whole debate and – you know, appeals, well, you all like this other stuff later. is going to drag on for, and it's going to take time away from classes and studying. Like, it's counterproductive for everything right. in every situation. Unless so, unless they're law students, maybe it was their project. <laughs> well, that's true. To like, that's it was true. like, go find a homework assignment where you can practice law. And they were like, that's, you know, and it's like, good experience. That's, that's good true. experience. Well, I mean, you could say it's a waste of time in the other direction as well. They pass this law or rule, and then someone wants to overturn it. Isn't that a waste of time as well? Yes, that's so, why you should just not be an issue out of the non-issue is what, or my view is. I think I think if someone doesn't want to have a flag in an area, that's fine. It's a non-issue. So I think it became a really big issue. It's like this is what's wrong with America. This is wrong with liberals. This is the wrong, what's wrong with young people. This is like they don't love America like we used to. And I think that's a lot of bull. I think, I mean, one they got overturned. Like two days after no, someone found out, it, out of curiosity, because you keep talking about the student body and how they voted for it, and it should be well, okay. And you said it got overturned by who? Yeah, I, I, I'm not exactly sure. It could have been the uh, uh, um, like the dean of the university. I, I don't know. If say, he had I pulled the, the story. I pulled the story up real quick when Mark first brought it up. I can look at it real quick. I'm going in blind because I had no idea anything about this. So. Well, I actually didn't either. Um, but when he first started talking about it, I quick Googled it. Um, it was a California College student council that banned it from a common area in the student government offices. It was quickly denounced by the student body president, and a high, higher student panel overturned it two days later. So, so I mean, a panel made it, and then a higher panel overturned it. Yeah, yes. sort of like how you have in real government, like you could have a lower, like a state or a local governor, <clears throat> like make a law and then federally it gets overturned. And Obama and, overturned it. <laughs> and like I said, it's not a, it's not a real issue because it, it resolved itself. But I think like well, people get, get so it, upset. it didn't really resolve itself. It took a lot of like wasted time from a lot of people to. <laughs> Although, you know, on the contrary, it's getting us a podcast right now. That is true. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, on second thought, it. keep banning stuff. <laughs> Pull stuff down off so, the walls left so, and right. So talking about something like this, it reminds me, what are, what's your guys' thoughts on... Uh, this is going to be, man, this is going to be tricky. Uh, what's your guys' thoughts on the death penalty? You don't really have to give your thoughts on the death penalty, but you know the death penalty in the news lately? <clears throat> Have you guys no, heard about I, this at all? Is, uh, yeah. About the people who died slowly? or it, It's sort of about that. It, yeah. it relates to that. 
and the drug cocktail that they use, like for lethal right. injection, and it's coming out and being that, you know, it's not working right, so there's this big, like, I don't know if it's a federal ban. What I actually heard is the country who makes the cocktail right. refuses they to sell it to America now. Right, they, right. they, they don't use to. Yeah. Yep. They don't believe in the death penalty. So Utah is trying to vote to get firing squad back as their means of, of death penalty if lethal injection is not available at the time. And that but, kind of that kind of baffled me when I heard that. I was like, it feels like we're stepping backwards. Well, I mean, let's say if somebody died for that took like let's say six hours to die and maybe suffered pain throughout those six hours, wouldn't be shot in the head be much quicker so, and less painful? You know, I don't know. Firing squad it, is better. What's really it's usually the body. But. What's really strange to me is I, there was a guy who one of the big proponents for allowing for the firing squad and things like that. He did a speech. And he was when he was like talking about this to the nation, and he made some comment about how the the lethal injection drugs and how they can take like twenty to thirty seconds of you know nobody knows what the person's actually feeling, just going on and on about all the, the stuff with the lethal injection, and it's like where a firing squad is only painful for three to five seconds before you're you know you're you know declared or whatever. So for one, how do you know how long it's going to take to kill you? with with a firing squad and for two working in the medical field we do a lot of things all the time to ensure that people don't feel pain especially like right so i I, i'm i find it very difficult to believe that lethal how is it so hard to come up with a lethal injection formula that's not adequate well i one i think is really strange is why do we need other countries drugs to lethal injection that's also like because like it, if you if you ever had like a old a person who's been really sickly and they've been taken to a, a what do you call them a, a, not a retirement yeah, yeah. home no like where basically crematorium uh old old like basically sick people go before they die the hospice. oh hospice oh yeah hospice I mean most of the time when they they die the hospice injects them with a lot of like let's say morphine or drugs to the amount where basically they know that they're they're not going to survive. Yeah, palliative palliative care protocol. I I've done it a lot in the hospital, and it literally is all about keeping somebody comfortable. And it talks like increasing doses of morphine if they look uncomfortable, like to ridiculous levels, which essentially is just starts sh shutting down the respiratory drive. But it just keeps right. them comfortable when that happens, and that's a long process that you're keeping somebody comfortable and as as peaceful as you possibly can. That's not even talking about the stuff like. We innovate people. We usually shove a tube down their throat when they can't breathe into their lungs. And there's a specific drug cocktail we do that with that you have to do in a certain order because one's a paralytic. It will paralyze you. But you want to make sure you have the person knocked out before you paralyze them because they, you paralyze yeah, somebody who's completely there. It is like the worst apparently like thing in the world. I obviously I've never gone through it, but I can imagine. So okay. it's a specific order that you do it in. You knock them out and then you paralyze them because if you do it the other way, it could be agonizing. We do that. Constant, like constantly, like multiple times a day on some days in the emergency department. I can't imagine how once I got to that state, I can't just give them the thing that finishes them off without having too much of a problem. Like I just, it, it baffles me as a medical professional, but I've never researched the lethal injection cocktail before, so I have no idea. Right. Oh, uh, one of the things. That, oh, go ahead, Mike. I was just going to say, I think probably what it is is the pharmaceutical companies that make it. And I'm kind of on board. I don't understand why we can't just make it in this country. That's kind of weird. Um, but I think they know if they're selling it to a government agency as opposed to like a hospital. Maybe. Maybe that's how they track it. Yeah. I mean, like possible. maybe like it's not clear by the FDA because some people would be against the death penalty. So therefore they made a federal ban so well, that prevents. I don't think you, I think this is a specific cocktail that comes like in one mixed thing. It is, but one Which, of the ingredients, if unless I'm mistaken, it's just one of the ingredients that they need for this cocktail is only made like overseas, right? And they won't sell it to us because they don't like the death penalty. So, but I, I would assume that those ingredients, you're not buying a lethal injection cocktail at a normal hospital. So. 
Right. Well, that's what I'm saying is maybe that's how the overseas companies know where it's going to is because it's not purchased by like a, you know, a federal body most of the time. I guess that, that makes sense. I guess that's true. So then if you, both Mark and Mike, if you mm -hmm. did some crime of whatever type that you earned the death penalty for, okay. if you had to make a choice of all the choices out there right now, what would you choose as your way to die between death penalty options that we know throughout history, like lethal injection, beheading, firing squad, I don't know, maybe getting knifed to death or something at you know some point back in the day? Hmm. What would you think would be the quickest and most painless way to go? I've actually heard that drowning is one of the most peaceful ways no. to go. <laughs> and that's why waterboarding doesn't work is <laughs> because it's so well, peaceful nobody ever gives up secrets <clears throat> no but waterboarding is just you feel like you're drowning when you're not actually I've heard the actual act of drowning like your brain understands at some point that you're you know in yeah, trouble so it starts releasing endorphins and like it, it's pretty peaceful from what I have read so that might be a good option. Uh, maybe like um, <laughs> I never thought I'd heard somebody you know, say I'd rather you know drown. How people used to uh, like how people commit suicide even now is is they'll leave their car running inside their garage and just drift and off to that. sleep because of carbon monoxide. Yeah, they do uh, all say that's pretty peaceful too. I forgot about that. Can I change my answer? <laughs> no, no, you have to drown. <laughs> oh, well, now we're drowning. <laughs> oh, but so, are you even? Uh, how about you, Jeff? How would you do it? I, I I would think of all the normal options that you'd hear about out there, I would think beheading would be the guillotine. As long as it's sharp enough, <laughs> you take off my head. I can't imagine how I'm feeling pain for very well, long. Well, no, that's the thing with the guillotine. They do it around the neck area, right? Yeah. But you know that most of your brain function uh, happens up here. So, yeah, you might not have the lower body sensations, but your your upper you know, like your brain might still have a little bit of activity for like four or five seconds. Yeah, or I was even... going to say, actually that same, and now I wish I could remember where I heard this or read it, um, but the same study that I heard the drowning bit from, um, they said that back in the old days it, it was recorded on several in, in several different you know, historical records that the head like blinked and twitched and stuff for up to like 10 to 15 right, seconds. We don't know if that's just like nerves, nerves that are working. Like, where are the pain receptors are they still functioning at that point? Like, yeah, that's I guess you really have no idea. Uh, <coughs> but I would think right. in my mind, I would think a firing squad would be like the scariest. Because who can guarantee that that guy's going to get that kill shot? I'm going to take like 18 bullets before they get that kill shot. <laughs> well, then it's, yes, they did like it's in three to five seconds, but it'll be like, ah! <laughs> yeah, that, that, seems, that seems really insane, the firing squad. Unless they did like a cannon and they put it right next to your head. And then you're like, I mean, it would just splatter your brains everywhere. That would probably be the absolute quickest way to die. I mean, that would be like hundredths of a second, right? I, I, you would think? Probably. If, I mean, if you actually, like, basically vaporize the guy's brains, or gal, gal's brains. But, I mean, yeah. then do we work like chickens at that point? Do we, like, run around for a while before we fall over? Well, your body that? might. Yeah, your body might. But, it would, but that would just be nerves, for sure. But don't pain receptors work in the fact that, like, if I touch something <clears> hot, <throat> doesn't... The pain, the, the receptor doesn't go all the way up to the brain before a reaction happens because the pain receptor. Well, I thought it did. No, the pain receptors go off first. Like, that's the thing about pain but, receptors. Is it but you wouldn't there's, there's know two. to feel pain without your brain. Like, right. it wouldn't, that wouldn't translate into. It would react. Pain. It would react without the brain. But you. I, so you like, isn't, isn't your brain what tells you to feel pain? Like, I, I mean. I don't think so. But oh, yeah, I okay, think, I think so your brain does tell you when you feel pain. <clears throat> like, but your body can react without feeling pain. It can just do a, a reaction to a stimulus. So, like, right. you touch and, something and that's hot, what I'm saying. your body's gonna react first, and then the pain you will go to your brain, tell your, your brain, brain what's it. going on, and then your brain's like, "Well, fuck, <laughs> screw that." <laughs> that See, really I, don't, I don't know. I, I think but you'd it, feel the pain first. But you, no. you. 
your brain has to translate that receptor into pain. I mean, you don't know how to feel pain without a brain. So if you, the cannon goes off and your brain is 100 yards, you know, to the side of you. So therefore, wouldn't a guillotine be pretty non-painful? Does it fall your the brain pain right is still here? intact. It's still intact, but it's not connected to anything that's able to feel pain anymore. It's gone. Everything well, else is not attached. All to. these pain receptors are still <laughs> just, I just I feel a little <laughs> pinch right about here right now. Uh, razor burn. Just <laughs> <laughs> and you're I still, cut myself shaving again. <laughs> you, it's still possible that you might have enough mental awareness, if only for three to five seconds or something, that, oh, crap, this is not good. <laughs> I, I know in the UK, well, like when you cook a lobster, it's illegal to boil it alive. You have to take a, brain first. N- a knife and yeah, <clears throat> smash the brain in half. Animal rights activists taking away the joy of listening to a lobster scream in a pot. I don't think it actually screams, though. No, I mean, I've never heard one scream. I used to hear stories that they do and like crayfish and stuff. Oh, I have heard a crayfish scream before, which is similar to a lobster. When we cooked it up. Um, well, I mean, I don't, I don't think they, uh, uh, like my, my point is, I don't think they actually have the ability to scream. Like, it's probably it's just sick. like water, like or it's just air escaping. Bad. Escaping, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, it's not, I'm not saying they can't feel pain if a lobster can actually feel pain, but right, but it's, uh, it's probably just humanizing kind of a natural right. noise that comes along with it. But we didn't get to the point. Like, are you even for the death penalty? Am uh, I? Um, I'm not against it. I'm I'm kind of the same way. Like, I, I I want there to be hard evidence that you're guilty. See, I'm against it, and that's that's mostly. I would say that's a really good reason why I'm against it is that we know that we screwed up a, a several times in the past, and I think you know even if there's that one in ten thousand person that's completely innocent of the crime. That's basically your 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 country is committing murder. Well, I mean, you got like the the big hitters. Think of Saddam Hussein, Osama right. bin Laden. Saddam Hussein was actually Saddam Hussein was actually trialed and hung with the death penalty. Um, whereas, like Osama bin Laden, essentially we just sent in troops to go kill him. Right. America pretty much rejoiced. Yay! They're dead. Those assholes for what they did. I, if you have somebody who does something like that, and they were in America and on trial, mm-hmm. you'd still have people against the death penalty for them too, which is kind of right. like. Well, I don't. I don't really believe in the death penalty for even guilty people. Um, is there any like circumstances where you'd be like, like child molesters versus? Um, you know, one murder well, or a serial I murderer I who murdered like thirty people. What about the guys who stowed those uh, girls in his Ohio basement for like you know right. ten years or whatever? Well, because it's because here, here's the thing for me is that I don't think that killing someone actually like is a very punish isn't a, isn't really a punishment. Like I, I, you did something I understand really, really, really horrible, right. and then you you kill them. That's <laughs> they're taking I mean, like, it's like the easy way out, essentially. Well, it's sort of like um, you have the Columbine shooting, right? You have those kids shoot everyone else, uh, all these people, and then they kill themselves in the end because that's the easiest way out. Right. Right. I, I was just gonna say, like generally speaking, these are people who are not exactly enjoying life, you know, to begin with. So, I, I mean, they get to that point of being, you know, a murderer or whatever. For reasons, probably, you know, most of the time. See, that's when I'm more okay with the getting rid of the having to do death penalties in a humane way. This might be sadistic of myself, but I don't, I don't want to yes. be like <laughs> keep these people around for 30 years in jail. How much are they costing society for people that we're just basically putting away as punishment for the rest of their lives? So not feed them. Put them in a place, let them sit there for a couple of weeks, like, hey, sorry. Like, let them starve to death? Let them starve to death. Let them do whatever. 30 days, done. They're not What ready. happened? Weapons like that one in a thousandth person was you, and you're basically not only dying, but you're dying a very slow, painful death. 
I mean, if, did, if I did something that deserved the death penalty? Well, what if you were yes, the one yes. who was mistakenly? I mean, that sucks. <laughs> and that's, that where the, sucks. And that's where the problem, that, that's like the movie um, Minority Report. Yeah. Isn't that the basis of the end of that movie is that he found out that there was slight free will once you knew what was going to happen and therefore the whole thing went down. The fact that Tom Cruise didn't kill a guy at the end that shut well, down the entire project. No, because it was the CIA, it was the whatever director basically set up and framed the events that happened. Yeah, but he so, didn't. So, but he didn't follow through on the events that happened in the end, which is why everybody was like, "Oh my God!" Like it's not a one hundred percent guarantee that just because we saw this <laughs> that they're actually going to do that. So all these premeditated pre murders that didn't happen, they released everybody at the end of the movie because they're like, "We can't guarantee you actually would have done it." Yeah, something like that. I I, I thought the ending well, was really a, cool because it was so like, oh shit, like all these well, possible murders are now like just let loose. I, I I well, one, I don't think the death penalty actually does anything for prevention of crime, except for maybe the serial mass killers, which I think most of the time they probably should be put in more of a mental institute, a high secure mental institute over a uh, jail. But, I mean, uh, here's the thing with the death penalty that's most difficult for me is, uh, and you got into it with precogs, you know Hitler is an awful ho human being, hopefully. <laughs> Would you, If you had a machine that took you back in time and you could stop Hitler by killing him, would you? And this is Hitler before he did anything awful. I mean, this is the Hitler that's the painter that didn't get into a university that was, I think, staying with his Jewish friend at the time. Do, so, do I have a problem with going back and actually the act of killing Hitler knowing what he does? Not right. at all. The problem, I, the problem that I have with this situation is funny to put this to a Family Guy episode, but when they stopped 9-11 from happening and the world turned into garbage because the 9-11 events triggered so much stuff that actually like right. saved the world that they found out later, that's where you get you walk a fine line of right. the concept of changing the past. So eliminating the past changing aspect and saying that everything would be way happier of a place with Hitler. Hitler dead, I would not have a problem at all with killing the at the time innocent person knowing what he did. Really? Not at all. I and I agree with Jeff for the most I mean pretty much everything he said. Like there's always going to be the unknown of you know, the butterfly effect sort of situation where you never really know what one small act in the past could no. trigger other stuff. No. I'm not even talking about the butterfly effect. Let's say that uh, you know you kill Hitler and <clears throat> the world's pretty much the exact same, except for there's millions of Jews still alive that wouldn't have been alive because of the Holocaust and stuff. And the world is relatively what it is right now. It's more of the will you be willing to kill an innocent person to save lives in the future? Here, so here's the deal. If... Me, right now. I'm a nurse, I'm a firefighter, I'm an EMT, I'm in the business of helping other people. Right. If somebody came back in time, because in the future I become the biggest mass murderer that exists for whatever reason, and they killed me dead, at this present moment, before I've done anything wrong, mm. talking if I was somehow able to know, like be like have a thought process in the future about this, I'd be completely okay with that, knowing what they stopped. Hmm. I'd yeah, let, I mean, I'd let the sacrifice happen. Yeah, like my brain, like the only trouble I'm having with it in my brain right now is like selfish reasons, you know, because I am where I am right now and I have a family, you know. But in my younger years, yeah, absolutely, I would not have thought twice about it, you know. If you can, because you're you're sacrificing one quote unquote innocent person, where. If you know he's not really innocent, in fact, the total opposite. He's basically evil incarnate later in life. You could play the girl game. I can fix him. I can change him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I think that's really just... I, I, I do have issue with that. I, I actually don't, I don't agree with you guys at all. I don't think you should ever... It's because you don't have the balls, Mark. Make a stand. Do what's right. <laughs> I mean, 
maybe I would probably use a method trying to convince him to do otherwise. Oh, you wouldn't even play the girl card. Oh, my God. Yeah, you would, I would play the girl card. Because, I mean, like, I don't know. I, I, I think basically killing someone for doing nothing wrong yet. But they do do something but I, wrong. I you say, know I that. In our game, right. I thought in this and hypothetical even if it, knew what he was Even about. if it le leads to, let's say, Hitler being Hitler, if not, not killing him, I still think it's wrong. See, but here's the deal. But, what you got to understand is, think about this. You can't think of time as cyclical. It's a straight line. For you, right. your, your past, he did this stuff. Granted, right. it's his future, but he already did it in your past. So it's not that he's innocent. To him, he's innocent. To you, he's already <clears throat> done it. I, I say I don't think that's true. It's like as soon as you go into the past, you, he's innocent. And even if with the history, it, I think it's still it we still morally wrong to kill someone who did nothing wrong. And I think that's I think because like cause would it be morally get, wrong well, to kill him after he committed the acts? Well. Because, I mean, if you're going to say yes yeah, to that question anyway, then of course you're not going to do it before he does the acts. Right. But after the acts, I, I don't really believe in the death penalty, but for him, I wouldn't probably make an exception. I would probably keep him alive, but, like, you know, in Wasting prison. taxpayers' money for... But I think it's... I think if, if you wanted to punish someone, the punishment would be not to kill him. It would be for him to... Like, you know, be in prison. And start Say, oh, look, death. look at Israel. It's doing pretty well. <laughs> Maybe put them in America. Like, oh, look, the minority to uh, white majority. It's changing. I don't know. I, I, I don't think that's a... Ha <laughs> <laughs> sucker, <laughs> look what you... You I'm didn't saying, get your like, Holocaust maybe, to work. Maybe take him through, like, Anne Frank's house. The like, Jewish oh, look at The population's just like, increasing. Look, <laughs> I mean... What do you do with someone who's, you know, sadistic or, are, I don't know, like, but I don't think killing them is necessarily the solution. I think, you know, there's w one you could treat them and then make them realize the horrors of what they've done if it's possible. And well, and granted, yeah. the funny thing is with Hitler himself, wasn't his brain like destroyed from syphilis, and that's why he was making a lot of the choices he was making. Well, I mean, it could have been why he made such bad choices, like invading Russia and stuff like that, but I, I don't know if that's... Uh, I think he hated Jews not because of syphilis, it was because his political party at the time used that to an advantage. And then yeah. you get into this cycle of, level. like, I hate, I'm hate. i hanging out with people who hate Jews, and then I sort of grow even more hate kind of thing. Oh, so he's like a Vladimir Putin. Where is that? Uh, where is Putin right now? No one knows. <laughs> Actually... I have a theory Probably on where shirtless next to a horse. <laughs> I have a theory on what Putin's doing. Uh, so we can all let's let's is take he a traveling moment. back in time to try to kill Hitler. He could be. Yeah. Uh, let's have a theory on what uh, Putin's doing right now. So, like, if from a week from now we're like, oh yes, we're exactly right or, or exactly wrong, do you have an idea? Just make one up, Mike. He's. Getting ready to mess with the Ukraine some more. I feel like that's a safe guess. I'm playing it safe. He's on a Broadway tour in New York City. Shirtless next to a horse. <laughs> Shirtless next to a horse. That's I actually the name of the. He's end. actually starring in a Broadway play that's about to open called Shirtless Next to a Horse. Yeah, I want to add that to the end of my guess too. <laughs> I, I, basically, I think he's making alliances with other countries. So when he does invade <clears throat> Ukraine and elsewhere, that he'll have several allies. Basically, I'm thinking he might be preparing for World War Three. But you know, who knows? That's a great. That's note. happy. That's happy. That's note. Happy note. No, well, <laughs> you don't even have to go back in time. You guys get a gun, go kill Putin. But we don't know Street. at this stage. We don't know what if happens. You, you I was going to say, as in our hypothetical, we knew that Hitler was up to no good. All right. But uh, I wonder. So if Putin is planning for World War Three, I wonder if he's doing that shirtless next to a horse. <laughs> I, I pictured like 
Game of Thrones ish. Like he has this giant table with all the like pieces he can move around to plot his attack. Shirtless with a horse. Right. You know, next. I, I I know Putin's busy like running his country and invading other countries, but if he's gonna go shirtless, I thought he was gonna. You should work out just a tad bit more. I know he's like. I kind of had that same at, thought. Although he's kind of old, isn't he at this point? No, I mean you can. Still be old, but like maybe he wants to show his people that you don't have to be a bodybuilder to be beautiful, like television has made them think. He's like Russia's Megan Trainer. I don't know who that is. Oh, well, I, our younger audience, I'm sure, will know. I was like, I also that, do not know who that is. She does that song all about that bass. It's so popular. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. That's her. No trouble. I can't see. Putin saying that. <laughs> I would love to see Putin <laughs> saying that, though. Oh, if I could go back in time and make that happen somehow. Give him the lyrics ahead of time. Have Just him release that. Kill yeah. Hitler on the way through. I mean, <laughs> no big deal. Whenever I answer the phone, I'm like, hello. What pissed you off? It's a great argument to have. I love my mom, but I think she's half crazy for doing that. How dare you? Do you um, work with your girlfriend, Mark? Or your wife, Mark? I keep them separated. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I call people, they don't answer the phone, I'm like, F you. Wrong number, Click. <laughs> well, he's not that smart. And sometimes he sounds like he knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. Go. But therefore, you're an ass, and I don't want to talk to you anymore. Yeah, but what do we know? <laughs>